So number 10 on our cross-country planning instructs us to calculate out our true airspeed for both the climb and the cruise and find our gallons per hour off the performance charts. So first of all, let's discuss what our true airspeed is going to be. Now keep in mind that when we're flying down low, so this will be close to the ground, the air molecules are very thick and as we climb higher and higher, the air molecules get thinner and thinner. So when we're flying down low, our indicated airspeed might be, say, 100. Our true airspeed will also be about 100. Because remember, true airspeed is how fast your airplane is actually flying through the air. Indicated is simply read off the dial. So once we have our momentum up and we're climbing and now we're at a higher altitude, the airplane is physically moving faster through the air in order to still indicate 100 knots. So up here we may indicate 100 knots, but in order to, to obtain 100 knots, your plane was flying faster. So the true airspeed may end up being around 110, for example. So what we want to find in the performance charts is what will our true, true airspeed be for the climb and what will the true airspeed be for the cruise? Well, you know, we can calculate out everything, but we don't have to really be rocket science. As long as we get in the ballpark and we always err on the side of safety, then we're going to be safe for our cross-country flight. So what we'll do is for our true airspeed for the climb portion, if we're going to indicate about 80 knots on the climb, then we can simply call our true airspeed 80 knots on the climb. And we'll write that up here where it says true airspeed. So for the true airspeed for the climb, I'm just going to put it up here, will be 80. Now that we have our true airspeed for the climb, let's look at the performance chart to find out what our true airspeed is going to be for the cruise portion. So here's the cruise performance out of the 172 POH and along the left side it says pressure altitude. Oh, let me back back up. Be sure you always read the conditions. This would be at max gross weight and it's recommended lean mixture at all altitudes and it wants us to refer to section 4 for the cruise section. And in section four, you'll find that it wants you to lean the mixture 50 degrees rich of peak in order to obtain these fuel burn numbers and the true airspeed numbers. So we look down the pressure altitude column. We have 2,000, 4,000, and 6,000. So we are going to fly at 5,500, but we had calculated our pressure altitude to be 5,000. So we can interpolate between these two numbers here. And then we look over to see what RPM selections are available. And then we have three different columns up here that says 20 degrees below standard, standard temperature, or 20 degrees above standard. When we got our weather from the weather briefer, the weather briefer told us that the temperature at 6,000 feet was 14 degrees. Well, we want to know, well, what is standard temperature at 6,000 degrees? Remember, standard at sea level is 14 degrees, or sorry, 15 degrees Celsius. And for every 1,000 feet we go up, we lose on average 2 degrees per 1,000 feet. So at sea level, the standard temperature would be 15. At 1,000 feet, the temperature would be 13, and then 11. 9, 7, 5. So we've got 1,000 feet, 2,000 feet, 3,000 feet, 4,000 feet, 5,000 feet, and finally 6,000 feet where the temperature should be 3, but the weather briefer told us it was 14. So we are basically plus 10 degrees above standard. Standard at 6,000 feet should be 3 degrees, but today it's around 14 degrees. We are plus 10 above standard. When we look at our chart, the first one, the first column says 20 below standard, standard, and 20 above standard. 
So really we would need to interpolate between the standard column and the above standard column. We need to decide on what RPMs, what percent power we want to fly. Uh, some students put the power setting to 2200 RPMs every single flight because that's what their instructor tells them to do when they're out practicing maneuvers. But if we're going cross country, we may want to fly faster to hurry up and get there, or maybe we want to fly slower to conserve fuel. That just depends on what we would like to do for that particular flight. Most of the time we fly around 60% power. So if I go to the 4,000 and the 6,000, and I look over between the standard temperature and the 20 above standard, and I see about what power setting gives me about 60% power. So here's 61, 57% power. And where I'm getting that from is up here, it says percent brake horsepower. So it looks like about 2350, 2400 RPMs would give me about 60% power. And then at the 6,000 feet, it looks like 2450 to 2500, somewhere in that range would give me about 60% power. It's a little difficult this um, looking at this because we're interpolating between this one and we're also interpolating between this one. But if you just get a ballpark average, it looks like really about 2400 RPMs is what we would like to use for our flight today. Now if we wanted to write all these down and interpolate, we certainly could. So our numbers that we're working with are going to be, uh, we have 2400 RPMs, here it looks like 2450, down here to get 60% power it looks like 2450 and then 25, okay, 100 RPMs. So, so if we look at all this, it looks like 2450 would be the RPM setting selected for this particular flight. Okay, so now we want to also look at what true airspeed goes with this. So up here at the 2450, it looks like our true airspeed in knots would end up being about 109. And then for the hotter temperature, it looks like our true airspeed would be about 10, probably 109, I guess, because we're looking at about 60% power, so I'm just finding the difference between these two. And then down here at the 6,000, for the power settings that we want, it looks like true airspeed is going to be somewhere between these two numbers, so we'll just call it 111. And then between these numbers over here, it looks like, uh, actually it's 112, okay? So if we average between these, it looks like it would be about 110 for our true airspeed. Now, again, you only get these values if we have leaned it appropriately and your airplane is in perfect working order. So with this true airspeed, we would be better off estimating that we're going to fly a little bit slower. So I would probably use 105 as my true airspeed being more conservative. And the next thing we can pull off here is our gallons per hour. So gallons per hour it looks like it ranges anywhere between, it looks like about uh, 8.5 and over here it looks like about same thing, maybe 8.6. And then down here at 60% power, the fuel burn looks like about 8.5-ish and 8.5. So 8.5 looks like the fuel burn for our journey according to the book values but <clears throat> we would round that up a bit and make it at least nine just to be conservative because maybe you didn't lean it properly or maybe the mixture setting is not set properly for the aircraft, who knows? It's not a brand new airplane and we're not perfect pilots, so we would like to 
round our numbers to a more safe number. So we plan on making the journey with RPM set at 2,450. We're going to use a true airspeed for a cruise of 105, and we're going to use a fuel burn for a cruise of 9 gallons per hour. Now that we've got a little more information, we can start filling in our navigation log. So we have our true airspeed for the cruise is going to be 105, and our gallons per hour are going to be 9. Now up here in the fuel box, I know it's very tiny, but it says gallons on board, which we would write 53, and then gallons per hour, we're going to write 9.0, and we're going to use that for the flight planning. 